Andrew Hitchens took one to the chest, married with two, boy and girl. The wife around? She's the one called it in. Looks like a 38, 45 maybe, whatever. It was up close and personal. Look at the powder burns. How long? A couple hours tops. There's nothing missing. No sign of a forced entry. Both the front and back doors take keys. No witnesses, nobody heard anything. Everybody in the building was at work. See, that's why I don't retire. He has a bank account with almost $400,000 in it, which he opened three months after he was laid off. And you really believe she didn't know? It looks like he was withdrawing his old weekly salary from his secret stash and putting it in their joint account. And the wife was never the wiser. And you figure the money plays into the murder? Well, outside of that, this Andy Hitchens is an Eagle Scout. No weapon, no prints yet. Well, I doubt he went into the bank with 400000 cash. What's next? Well, we figured we'd talk to the bank, see if we can get a lead on where the money came from. All right. Yes, he closed his account. We issued him a... Huh. That's odd. What? Mr. Hitchens opened an account with us, but he closed it 48 hours later when the check he deposited cleared. You didn't ask him why? What was the check he opened the account with? It was a business check, something called Michon Diamond Exchange. Uh, Andy Hitchens, what did he supply you with? That is a name with which I am not familiar. All right. Is this your company's check? Sure is. Is that your signature? I cannot lie. That's good. So what's that on the memo line? <laughs> that is the language of Abraham and Isaac. I know what it is. I want to know what it means. That this Hitchens, who I never met before, mind you, he was looking for a buyer, and I was kind enough to offer a helping hand. So what did you buy from him, Zeph? What do you mean, sugar? Does it look like I'm selling sporting goods? Diamonds, too. Perfectly matched. Wait a minute. You're telling us that you paid a total stranger who walks in off the street almost $400,000 for two diamonds? Emerald cuts. He could have got a lot more. Shake it. What are you going to do? Did it ever cross your mind that you might be purchasing stolen goods? You're talking to the Diamond King. I know every diamond on 47th Street. So where did the two emerald cuts come from? They belong to Shlomo Feinberg up the block. Believe me, if someone stole them from him, it would be up on that flashing thing in Times Square. A man buys two of my best stones. What, I'm going to forget? How much you pay you for them? Well, you know this is a down economy. People buy food, pay rent, diamonds. They're not hopping off the shelves. Was there an answer in there somewhere? It was bigger than a bread box. You know what I think, Ed? I think Shlomo here and Mr. Hitchens are in the laundering business. 380000 and change. And let me guess, he paid you in cash. Do I look like a putz? Cashier's check, money order, or no sale at all? This Mr. Hitchens was the former. In my business, I've learned, always make copies. This is made out to cash? Yes. Endorsed to me. See? Here we go again. Sorry, no Hitchens does any banking here. Well, is there some way you can tell us who the check was issued to? Um, sure, but... Miss Gelman, that check may have been stolen, so the quicker we gather the facts... Sure, sure, I understand. Mr. Lonnie Jackson remortgaged his townhouse. Who's Mr. Lonnie Jackson? Obviously one of our clients. Hmm. He had us issue a cashier's check made out to cash. And that's the address of the townhouse? Yes, 11 West 121st Street. Harlem. So this Lonnie Jackson character mortgages his house to pay off Andy Hitchens. So what you thinking, blackmail, gambling, drugs, what? Hey, whatever it was, I doubt it was on the up and up, given the hoops Hitchens jumped through to hide it. We still don't know this had anything to do with his murder. Two guys up to no good. One of them winds up with a couple of slugs in his chest. The odds are the other one knows something about it. What are you going to do, contractors? You Lonnie Jackson? No, Russell Brown. You call me Rusty. You working for Lonnie Jackson? You never heard of him. That's funny, because the bank says he owns this piece of property. Guy stopped paying his bill. Some mortgage company out in Kansas City put it up for auction. I buy it, fix it, flip it, and forget about it. Your guy let it go at this price. He's running from something. Yeah, us. 
Oh, so this Lonnie Jackson. Who we haven't talked to yet. Refinances his house up in the hinterlands. Hey, man, Harlem real estate is up and coming. You should see what a brownstone goes for up there. Well, he takes the money he gets from the refi and turns it over to Andy Hitchin. The dead guy? Mm-hmm, but before he ends up dead, he buys diamonds from a dude named Shlomo. For his wife, I hope. Oh, what fun would that be? No, he walks right across the street and sells them to another dealer named Zev. And you don't think it was buyer's remorse? I think Hitchens went through a hell of a lot to keep his wife in the dark. And somehow, I don't think his wife was the only one he wanted to keep that money from. Yeah. Hitchens and Jackson were into some kind of bank fraud, or Hitchens was blackmailing Jackson. Either way, the money's got to be in the middle of this. Well, what about this Lonnie Jackson? Nothing so far. He's a solid citizen, no yellows. Hey, Roger says she got something for us. Gee, Rogers, I'm really glad you called us. At least tell us he ate something exotic. This coffee count? How's this for exotic? That's a bullet. It comes from a gun. Oh, uh, not from any gun I've ever seen. Ran it past ballistics, and it turns out it comes from something called a 7.63 Mauser. Weapon of choice for the Nazis. It still doesn't help. Well, it does if Lonnie Jackson is a collector. And if we had the slightest clue as to where to look for him. Nice thing about a neighborhood is everybody knows everything about everybody else. We looking for one of your friends, Lonnie Jackson? Ah, the kid. Always getting himself into some kind of jackpot. What's he up to now? Well, we don't know, but we'd sure like to ask him. So who's stopping you? We can't find him, and it turns out he don't own his house no more. Oh, that can't be. He bought that place after the war for 10 grand. It was his pride and joy. Turns out he took out another mortgage on the place. No way. He didn't believe in debt. If he needed money, he'd come to me. When's the last time you saw Lonnie? Well, it's been a while. I just figured he was visiting his grandkids in Charleston. You get to be our age. Grandchildren about the only ones that want to see you. Screen name Lawn Jack last logged on two months ago. Now, if you could only tell us where he was when he used it. What makes you think I can't? 256 Mount Morris Park. That's Harlem. We can hear you in there. Open up, we're going to kick it in. One. Two. You should know better, Colonel. You got no right to come here like this. Actually, we've been trying to figure out what to arrest you for. Harboring a fugitive, obstruction of justice, or just being a general pain in the ass. I'm doing nothing of the kind. You lie to us, Horace. You become an accomplice. Kid, what are you doing? Lonnie Jackson? <clears throat> You're a tough guy to find, Mr. Jackson. It all depends on who's doing the looking, I suppose. You gave him almost $400,000, Mr. Jackson. Doesn't that ring a bell? No, why would I do that? That's what we're trying to find out. Well, you know, maybe I did meet him. I don't remember. Look, Mr. Jackson, you were certainly sharp enough to get the money from the bank, give it to Mr. Hitchens, kill him, and then hide from us. So this senility act, though it's fun, the longer you keep it up, the harder it's going to be on you. That's nice, Mr. Jackson, but why don't you go on and sit back down? Always show a lady respect, especially one as pretty as you. Mm. Please. You might change your mind after you hear what I've got to say. Here's the thing, Mr. Jackson. JFK keeps all of its workers' fingerprints on file. So I had forensics compare your prints to the ones found at Mr. Hitchens' apartment. They match. You want us to call your son? No. Well, the court can appoint a lawyer for you. I have my own counsel, Lieutenant. I'll be just fine. Well, then, let's have at it. You have no case. You have no motive. You have no idea what the hell happened. Jack, you should dismiss this mess we should all go home, have a cognac, and get a good night's sleep. I'm all for it. But first, I'd like your client to explain why he gave all that money to the victim, Andrew Hitchens. Giving is a crime? I call it charity. Or why his prints match those found in the victim's apartment. Perhaps Mr. Hitchens invited him over for a cup of tea. Well, then why did Mr. Jackson pretend he'd never heard of Hitchens? He's old. He's forgetful. The victim was killed by a weapon used in World War II. Yes, and if and when you find it, we'll talk. I'm offering manslaughter one right now, Aaron. That's 15, right? 
And the alternative being? Murder too, 25 to life. Somehow, I don't think it makes a difference either way to me. <laughs> 